butternut, acorn, spaghetti, pumpkin. There are over a dozen different kinds of winter squashes. And when it comes to other squashes, too, there might be hundreds. Might be hundreds. Hundreds and hundreds of squashes are joining us now. For some education on these squashes, we have Chef Bill Collins, chefbill.com. Sue, so many squashes. We have some here today. We have some squashes here today provided for our friends at Whole Foods in Hadley. Thank you. And they're just the most popular kind that you see in most supermarkets uh, and most farm tins are the acorn, uh, which is this, and the butternut, which is this. And you see them uh, all over the place, farm stands and everywhere. And uh, these are the most popular. They're all very flavorful. But the other kinds that we have here, uh, another version of the acorn. This is called a delicata squash. And this is a very uh, thinner skin. And you can also eat, <clears throat> eat this skin. And this one is called a buttercup squash. It looks, looks very similar to the kabocha uh, squash, which is usually a little more uh, uh, not indented. So what's the opposite of indented? Outdented? Outdented. And a little orange in the bottom. Yeah, that's a science phrase. Yeah, it's a okay. culinary term. <laughs> so but these are generally the most popular with these two leading the parade. Now, can we talk about taste profiles or do they all just taste like squash? Well, yes and no. Okay. Uh, they're all kind of variations because you've got them a very similar mouthfeel in many cases, although some are a little denser, uh, but it also depends how you cook them. Uh, but uh, some are a little sweeter, a little more flavorful. I think that's why these two are the most popular. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, these are a little uh, smoother when you cook them. The buttercup is a little denser when you cook it. Uh, the delicata uh, is kind of in the middle, very flavorful, but again, with a thin skin, you can just kind of cut the, uh, mash the whole thing up. I feel like you need a chainsaw to cut this, though. A it's chainsaw, so a chainsaw would be good, tough. or just drive your car into it to smash it. Oh, okay. We do there that. You go. We do that in kitchens a lot. Yeah. See now, good actually, tip. that that actually kind of gets down to the whole knife skills thing and how you cut that because uh, I've said uh, for a long time now that uh, my choice of, of preference for a chef's knife is a 10-inch chef's knife. Many people have an 8-inch chef's knife, and the bigger knife helps you in daily tasks for cutting things because you have more of a cutting area. When you've got something heavy, dense, and oddly shaped like this, a bigger knife is helpful. And let me show you why. Yeah. Yes. And my other question is peeling this thing because with the, with the bulbous part here on the bottom, mm -hmm. Such a pain in the neck to peel. They're very, they are very annoying to peel. So that's why in most cases uh, you want to cook it first, unless you're going to cut it up and cube it. But all I can say is get a good sharp peeler and peel away. It'll take a little extra time, but it's easier if you're just going to be cubing it than to try and uh, peel each little piece, each piece after you get get to that point. <laughs> and I've used a knife hard. before to peel it, but. That then I lose three quarters of my squash. You want a heavy duty peeler. Yeah. Uh, the OXO brand is good. It's, a, it's nice and sharp because also you need a good handle on it because it, it is hard work. So, but once you get over, it's not like it's going to take you hours. Five minutes, it'll be done. All right, I want to see you cut this thing. Me too. So get here's the thing. The First thing you want to do uh, is find uh, the you now because you've got the ridges, you can get a kind of a uh, uh, have it sit. Let me just grab this for a moment. This is harder because uh, there isn't a real obvious flatter spot. So you try and find one there. I'm going to cut both of them. Okay. So here's what you want to do. Uh, find the most common point. This is why the longer knife comes in more, more handy. Because you, wanna, you don't want to start with the knife up in the air because it's, it's moving around like that. Uh -huh. So you want to kind of plant the knife like that. And, so, and you're not going to be cutting the whole thing in one fell swoop. So you want to go like that and, and make your first cut. See how the blade lift up there and push down. And you say, okay, that's as far as I can go for the moment. Now, if you were doing this knife, again, because it's shorter, it's just going to be that much harder to, to uh, get, right. get as much cut. So once you've made that first cut, and I'll, I'll still like that, you pull the knife back a little bit, and it's still on the board. You do that again. It comes up in the air a bit, but you take your time. Don't, don't expect you're going to cut it all in one fell swoop or the knife in the one, mm -hmm. one place. Pull it back a little bit more. And, and push down. Notice this hand is nowhere near the blade. Right. Keep that far away and with so, all that force. Exactly. Work down a little bit like that. Now, it might be a little tough at the end, so you can either keep going like that, or since it's already split somewhat, break it apart. P push it apart with your thumb um, from the other hand and cut back along this way. Now, Bill, I know you've been on before and you showed us how to cook spaghetti squash, and you said you could roast the whole thing yes. whole. Can you do the same with the butternut squash? You just can poke holes in it? You, yes, you can. The key thing actually is poking holes in it. And just like a uh, baked potato, you want to go like that. You don't want to, you know, stab. It's not like, you know, the shower scene in Psycho. No, we're not doing you, that. You just want to do that a little bit because you're just breaking uh, this, this, the, the skin so the steam can come out. I got you. Okay. So that's, that's one key thing. If you are going to be doing it whole, you can do it uh, and then just, you know, keep it whole like that and just make sure you, you go around it. 
I like to cut it in half because it's that much faster. Uh, the uh, heat has to only go through half of it. Mm -hmm. And this will take roasting in the oven 35, 40 minutes. Depends because these come in varying sizes. So figure anywhere from 35 to maybe 50 minutes or so to do that. Okay. So you can do it whole or do it in half like that. But you want to scoop out the seeds uh, and then pop it in the oven. Okay. Now, Chef Bill, we have about 30 seconds left, but for now, can we cut one more squash? We can. And so, again, the same thing. See, I've got the knife down like that. And notice the hand is just kind of holding it there and then just readjust it a little bit like that. <laughs> you can't get frustrated and just throw it against the cement. <laughs> see, <laughs> see that's why. That's, well, you can do that. That's why. Yeah, but you have to go like that. Yeah. That's why you want to have a, a heavy duty knife to be able to cut through that. Everyone should have one of those, right? You should. See, and again, now that I've got the flat surface there. Uh huh, that's easier. And then just a little smear of olive oil, pop it in the oven, and you're good Easy to go. Easy enough. So later, Chef Bill, you're going to be showing us how we both can microwave and roast our squash. Absolutely. Good. Don't go anywhere. More Chef Secrets when we return. We are back with Chef Bill, and we're continuing our segment on winter squashes. Yes. Now, earlier you showed us how to cut them, so now that we know how, how do we cook them? Uh, my favorite way of cooking it is roasting it. You can also do it in the microwave, and I've got both uh, examples of that. Uh, because that way you don't have to go through, as we were talking about earlier about peeling them and getting ready to cube them, which some recipes call for that, and that's fine. But I just love it when it's roasted. You get more of a flavor. And let me show you, actually, I've done one of each. This one, I just threw it in the oven, a little smear of olive oil, salt and pepper. Oh, so that looks like how it's supposed to look. And this one, it's kind of close, but this was uh, in the microwave. Uh, uh, also, just a light smear of olive oil, a little salt, uh, forgot the pepper. And so, uh, that's why the little spots are there. And in many ways, they're identical uh, because, uh, you know, they're just cooked through. The heat has gotten through to them. But I like the flavor. This is a, is a little more flavorful than that one. This is also a more a richer color, too. It That's a little bit more it, pale. It, it really is. Microwaves don't bring out the color in anything. So, so <laughs> In fact, they probably, like, extract the color from yeah, it. <laughs> I, I think there's a technical term for that. Absolutely. <laughs> so here's how you get this ready for the next step because you want to peel it. And it's so much easier to peel this when it's been cooked. And so really, again, this is a time when you, know, you say to your kids, play with your food. It's going to get a little bit messy, but that's part of the fun. You just take your paring knife, and it'll peel right up. Sometimes it comes right up. Sometimes the peel come up in pieces. Now, butternut squash, the one that we're making right now, isn't one where the, the, the core and the, the outside is delicious. Oh, uh, could you say that again? I don't remember <laughs> what I said necessarily, <laughs> but I think what I'm getting at. The outside of this one, the, the butter skin. skin. The skin, it's that's not edible. the word. It, not it, it, it's not as, uh, no, I would, I, would, I would peel the skin, and unlike the delicata squash, which is the little uh, uh, yellow one with the green stripes, uh, this one you do want to peel. So that, the delicata is more like a, spaghetti, um, I'm sorry, a summer squash or a zucchini where you can eat the. Eat the yes, yeah. you can eat those. Uh, yes, and that's exactly true. So uh, it's a little more flavorful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a little piece of this, and we can actually do a taste test. Oh, and you, yay. And you oh, can you know even what? see from the color here, yes? I'm going to do a blind taste test. I'm not going to look for a no while. No need you to guys lose your eyesight over this, Seth. So what I would do is I'm just going to take some of this skin off because this is still a little bit warm. Okay. Now, what I, I'm going to do, uh, we're going to have just a, uh, it's still quite warm. Let's do a little piece okay. there we're gonna, and a I'm little gonna piece here. Seth so pardon my fingers. Okay, Seth's not looking. He's not looking. Tell me when All to right. turn around. Hold on. Hold on. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Keep them. Okay. All right. Um, open your eyes. No, I, I think it no, works it's okay. better if I don't. No, because oh, there's okay. pepper on one. Okay. I don't want <laughs> Okay. Are you? No, put it in my hand. Oh, oh, oh. It's in a spoon, though. <laughs> oh. I'm spoon feeding you. I'm used to this. Oh. Okay, there's one. Eat that. Okay. Now, one might be a little warmer. It's very yep. squashy. Okay, okay good. Go. And number two. Which one came out of the oven? Did number two come out of the oven? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Did wow. it taste different? It tasted... I, I, I can't describe it, but yeah, it did taste a little bit different. A little more cooked through or... A little richer. Yeah, uh, yep. richer. That's the word I'm looking for. So what do you do to take this to the next level? There are a couple of things. I like to put in just a little bit of cinnamon. Just, just a hint of cinnamon. Mm. Nice. And a little salt and pepper. You know, I think everything tastes better with a little cinnamon. You know, cinnamon just brings out the great flavor in everything. It You're does. absolutely right. 
and I also usually add a little bit of orange juice, but I left it about 15 feet behind me here. So we're going to have this without the orange honesty. juice. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just sitting off the side. Do you want me to get it for you? No, actually, I think this could be kind of cool without it because okay. also the texture is good. The uh, it, it it's a moist one, so I think uh, we should dive Shall in and see if it needs any in. more any more flavoring. As always, you can tune in next week for even more Chef Secrets with Chef Bill. Thank you Ooh, so much. Is that good? So good. <laughs> Very simple. Fall. <laughs> so fall right so now. So fall yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, more secrets. Tune in next week. Thanks so much, Chef Bill. Thank We're going to keep eating squash. I'll keep eating. <laughs>